If you're narrowing in on different Boston neighborhoods, figuring out which area might be the best fit for you and considering South Boston, AKA Southie, then this video is for you. We're getting into what that Southie lifestyle really looks like when it comes to living Boston. So let's get into it. Hey there, my name is Jacob Pystrup. Real quick, as always, if you are moving to the Boston area, anywhere in Boston, or you think you might be moving to Boston, looking to buy, looking to rent, whatever it is, and you would like help with that process in this ridiculous real estate market we're living in, give me a call, shoot me a text, or send over an email, whatever works for you. Let's get in touch, let's get that conversation started so we can get you here to Boston. I am a real estate advisor and I mean honestly, my favorite part of my job is being able to share Boston, share this beautiful city with my clients who are moving here sometimes for the first time. So that is what I really love. So let's get into this video on South Boston, Southie as you will hear it referred to. Now, right off the bat, an important distinction you gotta be aware of is South Boston is not the same as South End. Those are two different neighborhoods and they are right next to each other. So if you're looking on the map, South End is a little bit west compared to South Boston. They are different areas, different neighborhoods, and just overall, you know, a different lifestyle to live there. South End is separated from from South Boston by I-93. So that's the highway that kind of cuts the, the border between South End and South Boston. South Boston is Southie, South End is just the South End. There's not really a nickname for it. So if you hear people say South Boston, Southie, that is different from the South End. Those are two different neighborhoods, but they are right next to each other. Another thing real quick, technically the Seaport District is part of South Boston. Seaport is culturally very different from Southie as in the, the actual neighborhood of South Boston. So that is a different video I have on the Seaport district if you're interested in that. This video today is really on the actual neighborhood of South Boston, which is just below the Seaport District. So South Boston, it is a beautiful area. It's seen a lot of growth over the past decade or so. A lot of stuff been changing. Um, it has a very, you know, traditionally Irish American history. That is kind of how it started, you know, back in the early days with Irish immigrants who were coming to America you know, very concentrated in the South Boston area. So it does have a historically Irish American background. And back in the early days in the 1800s, it was a lot of farmland and it was kind of this Irish Catholic kind of working class community that lived in the South Boston area. Obviously a lot has changed since back then and since South Boston officially became part of Boston. It's gone through a couple different kind of demographic changes, seen a lot of growth over the past couple of years as well, just as far as property values, new development, people moving to the South Boston area because it has become more popular. So it's seen a lot of growth, you know, over the past couple of decades, definitely is not what it used to be, you know, when it was first occupied. South Boston definitely has a very strong community vibe and it has a really strong neighborhood feel considering it's, you know, in the city right next to downtown Boston, you wouldn't really expect that, but it does have a very nice kind of quaint neighborhood feel to it. If you're walking through the streets of Southie or if you're living there, it does have a nice neighborhood feel to it. Like I mentioned, South Boston's history is very Irish and you still see a lot of remnants of that to this day in the form of Irish bars, pubs, the St. Patrick's Day Parade in South Boston is huge. That is a big deal every year. Very popular in the Southie part of town. So again, just kind of elements of that Irish background that you will notice in South Boston. One thing I love about South Boston that you can't really find in other Boston neighborhoods is really just the way it combines that city lifestyle with that waterfront living. So you can't really find a lot of other places in Boston that are right on the beach or at least walkable to the beach. In South Boston, you got that very easily. Southie has the longest strip of beach in Boston. So you have three different areas of that beach, but it's all one big thing. So there's Carson Beach, L Street Beach, and M Street Beach that are all along the eastern side of Southie, right on the water. But really, they're all just one big strip of beach that you can walk to. If you live in the area, you will have a lot of houses that directly face the beach on the other side of the road. So, I mean, that is a huge draw to the area, just being able to have a condo or a house that is either 
right on the water or pretty walkable to get to the beach if you're someone who likes that feeling of just waterfront living, ocean views, that is very easy to find in Southie. Another great thing about Southie is that if you're living here, if you enjoy nightlife or if that's important to you, Southie is gonna be great. There are a ton of bars, restaurants, just fun places to go, spend a night out getting drinks, dinner with friends, family, whatever. That is a huge draw and a huge bonus of living in Southie because there is so much to pick from. There's American, Italian, you know, Asian, Mexican, so many great places to choose from. Lots of different unique restaurants and bars with great drinks and great food. That is a huge plus of Southie. Now, the thing you wanna know about that, unfortunately, is that although there are a ton of options, I mean a ton, they get very busy on the weekends. In Southie, it is crazy, it is packed. You will see lions going out these bars, like down the street just to get in. So is that a normal thing? Not really, but in Southie, that's very normal, unfortunately. You will see lions out the door on the weekends on a Friday or Saturday night to get into these bars. It is packed. Now, the reason for that I will explain is that you gotta look at the demographics of who lives in Southie. Now, there are laws about what I can and cannot say about demographics, age, that kind of stuff, fair housing law as a realtor. But what I will say, basing this off of data, is that if you look at the age distribution in Southie compared to the rest of Boston, you will see two things, and I'll put this up visually for you. South Boston has way fewer people who are college aged and way more people who are in that 25 to 34 year old working professional age group compared to the rest of Boston. What that means is Southie doesn't have a lot of people living there from 18 to 24, but there is a lot of people between 25 and 34 who live in Southie. So that very traditional young professional age group is very common in Southie. They like to go out, they like to drink, they like to have a good time. That is why you will see these places so packed on the weekends in South Boston. You have a pretty big population of that, you know, recent grad, young professional, working, new job, new promotion possibly in Boston, whether they went to college here or moved here from a different city, that is a very large age group in Southie. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind if you're gonna be living in the South Boston area is that if you are commuting or you're getting around for running errands, you gotta go somewhere else in the city, whatever it is, is that compared to an area like downtown, Back Bay, or Fenway, there really is no T system in Southie. So it is pretty much all buses. If you wanna use public transit, you have to use the bus system to get around Southie. There are two stops on the T in Southie, both of which are like all the way on the western edge of Southie. So they really don't go through Southie. They'll meet you on the border, like on the edge over by the south end and by Dorchester on the red line, but there is no T that goes through Southie for transit. And that's something I always have to remember as well because I'm very used to the T. I don't know the buses as well. So if I'm going through Southie, you gotta know how to use the buses unless you want like a 30 to 40 minute walk to get to a T stop depending on where in Southie you are. Now, when it comes to living in Southie, there's two different sides of Southie. You have the east side and you have the west side. This is gonna be East Broadway versus West Broadway that gets split down the middle pretty much at Dorchester Street. So Dorchester kind of goes at an angle through Southie and that is what separates East from West with the street names. And as far as price for whether renting or buying on the East side versus the West side, it's tough to compare. You do see a lot of new construction throughout Southie, lots of renovations and that kind of stuff. But what I will say is that the east side is where a lot of these waterfront properties are. There is definitely a premium for that if you want to buy or rent somewhere that is right along the beach. So that is where you see some expensive options in Southie because if you're right along the beach, that's on the eastern side. So you will see that as far as prices for buying and for renting if you're living in Southie. Like I said, Southie has become a lot more developed in the last decade or so. There's been a lot more new construction, lots of you know renovation, rehabs, redevelopment going on in Southie, both on the east side and the west side. So if you want, if you want like a brand new apartment or a condo, at a relatively lower price than Seaport, Back Bay, Beacon Hill, one of those much more expensive neighborhoods, that is a very big draw to Southie. Just for example, if you're buying a condo in Southie, two beds, either brand new construction or recently updated, you can find that, you know, realistically between $700,000 and $900,000 if you want. 
there are parts of Austin where you're not gonna see that under $2 million, just for comparison. So that's what I mean when I say that Southie has a lot of new options at lower prices compared to the rest of those Boston neighborhoods that can be very expensive to own in. And I mean, trust me, you know, if you want something bigger, more extravagant, you will see those condos in the 1 millions, 2 millions, and 3 millions in Southie. It's got the whole spectrum of price, but overall it is not as expensive to own in Southie when compared to Back Bay or Beacon Hill. So those areas that are much more expensive, you know, compared to Southie, you can find the same thing at a lower price. You also see a lot more options for single family homes or townhomes in Southie. So some other parts of Boston are very condo heavy, so you don't see a lot of single family houses. In Southie, you can find that. And again, for relatively lower prices compared to some other parts of Boston that are very expensive. So if you're looking between $800,000 and 1.2 million in Southie, you can find a solid house you know, between let's say 1500 square feet and 2000 square feet, depending on budget and what you're looking for, you can find that in Southie. Southie also has a very healthy market when it comes to multifamily options. So that, you know, typical traditional Boston triple decker, you will see a lot of those in Southie, whether they are sold as one building for a multifamily or if they've done a condo conversion and then sell them off separately as three individual units, you will see both of those in Southie. So you will have a lot of two family and three family options in Southie, granted at a higher price typically than a single family house. So expect between around 1 million and 2.5 million, depending on what you buy for a multifamily property. But you can absolutely find that in Southie, there are a bunch of options. You will also have options in that commercial space as well for multifamily. So five units, 10 units, 20 units, anything more than five, that's gonna be commercial likely well above that $3 million price point, but you will have options for that as well in South Boston. And if you're renting in Southie, whether it's just you, you have family or you have roommates, you know, you can find someone that is again, newer built or newly updated at a lower price than those luxury buildings you will see at high price points in Fenway and in Seaport. So I mean, for a two bedroom, you could find something that's newer built between $2,000 and $3,000 a month. You will see more expensive options, but you could find something below $3,000 a month if it's just two people. For a three bed, again, if you're looking between $3,000 and $4,000 a month, you can find something that's you know usually renovated or newer built. Sometimes the new buildings do have a premium on that, so it might be more expensive. But if you think about this as far as you know rent per month per person, you can try to be below $1,500 a month per person in rent if it's gonna be you with some roommates in Southie. So just to give you an idea of what you can get for renting and buying in Southie, there are lots of options and a lot of good stuff going on in the Southie neighborhood. So if you are moving to Southie or anywhere in Boston looking to rent or buy and you want help with that process of navigating the real estate market, figuring out which area seems to be the best fit for you and your family, let's get in touch, give me a call, shoot me a text, send over an email, whatever works for you, let's get in touch start that conversation so we can get you here to Boston. So with that being said, that is gonna wrap it up for today. Hope you take care, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video right here on the Living Boston channel.